but we're very excited today on our panel for Pride or Die. My name is Slaughter Sin, she with Empress of Gore. I run Women of Color in Hara, and I also run the Hara Tour Guide. My name is Jose Cadena, I'm one half of Foreign Color. My name is Puya Mohseni, I'm an Iranian-American actor, writer, and trans advocate. I have a very strange relationship with horror because I love it, but I don't have the stomach for it. I watch horror during the day. So I don't have to deal with being scared at night. That's actually something I used to do in my teens. Cause I used to like, I was so inquisitive, but at the same time I was scared shitless. I grew up with seventies horror, you know, things like Omen and The Exorcist and um, Halloween. It's a landscape that has for the most part been male dominated and white dominated. You know, women of color or people of color in general in horror. Well, we know that there's not a whole lot of representation. We are very rarely the leads. The landscape is changing. A lot of uh, young writers, they just have different mindsets about representation and inclusivity, women's role in horror, because until not that long ago, women were just there to be damsels to be done to. And you tell me how many women over 40 there are in horror movies. Not a whole lot. How many men over their 40s have been in the horror genre? A lot. We still have to beat some of these stigmas and how they treat women. Can you tell us how you got started as, um, as an actress? What was your inspiration? I wanted to pursue acting about 20 something years ago. It was not an inclusive environment, especially if you happen to be a trans person who was an immigrant. I actually had someone out me while we were in holding. The people who were representing me and helping me getting background work, they were also representing him. And somehow magically, about a month after this interaction, that agency dropped me. It just, I just wouldn't hear from them. So I left the business and then I decided to get back into acting. It wasn't until about six years ago that I decided, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to tell everybody because I have to, because I didn't make all the way from Iran to hear and go through everything and now want to hide. I was completely prepared for my acting career to be like, uh, but it wasn't. And some people come out to like a few people. I came out to 3000 people on Facebook because I don't do things small, apparently. <laughs> but then I also feel it opened many doors to me. How is that disclosure process when you collaborate with someone new? We had this mindset that we come out so other people will feel comfortable. I'm tired of that. I come out so I feel comfortable. You don't wanna like me? That's fine. You know why? Because I like me. Because I've gone through so many years of trying to get other people, please like me. I mean, I might be trans. Ah, oh, you might think I'm a freak, but I'm a person worthy of knowing. And now I'm like, excuse me? I don't have to beg anybody for anything. That doesn't mean that I'm going to be rude or impolite to anybody else or thinking that somehow I deserve something more than other people. But I sure as hell don't deserve less. They want to wage a war on me. I'm a Middle Eastern woman. I'm a trans immigrant. I have lived through war. Somebody wants to wage war on me. I will fight back. But I also fight back because I know the younger members of our communities, whether they happen to be communities of color, immigrant community or queer, they don't have that sense of self yet. They feel that they have to take less space so not to offend anybody. I'm not interested in rocking the boat. I just know there's a seat in that boat and I want that seat and I will say please. And if you don't respond to please, then I have other choice words to say. And if that keeps one young, queer person, and especially one young queer person of color who's disenfranchised by their society and their family, and if it keeps that child from wanting to take their own life, then me being out and loud and proud, then that has a purpose. When I auditioned for Terrifier, I wasn't out yet. Then I told Damien, and he was like, that's so cool. My character has a few scenes, but originally when I auditioned, only two of those scenes existed. He emailed me, he's like, you know, I really love your audition. I want to expand your character. What do you want to do? 
I love and I can really tap into something to play mother roles. And that's mm-hmm. how, you know, this kind of like weird, creepy relationship between the cat lady and art and Emily the doll and all of that came to be. That's actually one of my favorite frames. I can't believe it wasn't originally in the script with Art the clown and they're petting him and, and consoling him. I love that scene as well. In a way, it's like the creepiest scene in the film, but there's also something extremely tender and very sad about that scene. I didn't think it was going to become the huge thing that it became. I don't think any of us did. You see Art the Clown play with gender as well, cutting off those breasts and putting them on with the wig. And then he walks differently and he flips his hair. I've had people to tell me that that scene is transphobic. I don't think so. The genre is a violent genre. Art is a violent character. He does demeaning, humiliating things to every character. It's a violent film that violent things happen to everyone, man, woman, or otherwise. I want to quickly give a shout out to this artist. She designed a knife from Terrifier. Her name is Alana Bates. Rock on Alana. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Really quickly, I do want to congratulate you as well. I read the deadline story about your new project. About that headline, it says, so-and-so joins Puya Moseni in trans thriller. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as trans thriller. You don't say white people thriller. You don't say black people thriller. You didn't say woman thriller. You say thriller. I'm grateful for it. Uh, and I hope that the movie you know, lives up to everybody's expectations. I'm grateful for characters that are fully fleshed so then I can, I can do something interesting with them. But also on the other side, I love doing things that people like me haven't done before because that sets some sort of a precedence. If I'm the first Middle Eastern trans woman to be in these kind of movies, then that means there are gonna be people coming after me. And I love that idea. Maybe those movies will uh, paint those characters in a, in a better light. Um, and some people may say, well, doesn't that make you feel bad? I'm like a little envy inside me because people after me are gonna have hopefully better opportunities, but it also fills me with pride. Because I like to think that those people that come after, you know, maybe their journey will be a little better than mine. And maybe I have just a tiny, Bit into making that happen. So, you know, we have to come to terms with ourselves. We can't change the world at every turn. We can change how we look at it and what we do with it. And that's all I can do. Thank you so much for, for being with us. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you guys and see you again. Stay scary.